We're going to start in verse 20 of chapter 4, and we're going to go all the way to chapter 5, verse 5. Okay, it says, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that hateth, loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Let's pray. O oh Lord, as we uh, dive into these last few thoughts on loving our brother and sister, I pray that you would put together for us all that we've learned on this one topic in 1 John and help us to apply it. Lord, tie the bow for us. Uh, loose, uh, tighten loose ends, Lord, in our thinking. And may it be uh, ingrained in our, in our lives that we would be channels of your very love to each and every one of us in our church. Make us a loving church, a sacrificial church. Not just in word, Lord, as John says, but in deed and in truth. Lord, help me to be simple and not complicated. I ask for your spirit to uh, use me to be clear and fill me with your power. In Jesus' name. The creator of love, that is the uh, topic for today, the theme, the title, the creator of love. Now, uh, I want to open up with the question, can anyone tell me who created love? Okay, because God is love, okay? Hollywood does not do a good job in creating love. I, I was a teenager at one point, and I've seen the movies, and being a teenager, being an adult, and being married, what Hollywood presents as love is not love. If anything, it's selfishness. Hollywood focuses on trying to find the right person. Not that that's not important, but they made it, make it priority. Make sure you just find the right person. Rather, God tells us that we need to be the right people. And Christians, we need to be the right people, not in the context of, uh, yes, in the context of marriage, of course, but in love between brothers and sisters. Uh, we need to be loving because our Father, our Heavenly Father, is loving. And John... He's being so kind in how he writes 1 John, but the way, sometimes, he's a little bit blunt. Look at verse 20 of chapter 4. Um, if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. In other words, you are making a false claim. We as Christians make, false, make a false claim if we say that we love God, but we hate our brother. Why? Why? Well, it's because in verse 1 of chapter 5, everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. In other words, you can't love the father only. You also have to love his kids. I will explain that in a few minutes. Now, in this verse, in verse 20, I just want to make it clear. Anyone who claims to love God yet hate his brother is not being honest. 
That does not mean he's not saved. I want to make this clear. That's not what John's going to. He's talking to Christians. Christians can make false claims, and we can be dishonest too. So he's saying, Christian, don't say that you love God, but at the same time you are having a hard time loving your brother. The command to love one another is connected to loving God. Doing one without the other is impossible. You don't have to turn, but I'm going to show you some verses from Matthew 22. This is Jesus speaking to Pharisees. He is quoting the Shema. What is the Shema? It is a little section of Deuteronomy 6 that Moses wrote for us. He quotes it almost verbatim. He says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Moses started off with saying, Hear, O Israel, listen, Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you're to love Him with all your heart. That was Israel's prim primary command. Love Jehovah God. Now, obviously, we know in Old Testament history, they didn't do very well with that. <laughs> but that's his first command. With all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law, all the law and the prophets. Now, the word neighbor can mean anybody. Okay? It means anybody. Any human being, you need to love them. John is being more specific in his application in dealing with Christians. Because look at what he says in verse 1 of chapter 5. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So in verse 21 he says, he who loves God loves his brother also. Well here's the question. Who is my brother? <laughs> who is my brother? John's very clear. If you, have, if you know of someone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, they are born of God. In other words, they're your brother or your sister. Yes. Simple. Simple. And everyone that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. All right. It wouldn't be right to love an individual's father and not love him and his siblings. You can love me. You have to love Benaya too. And I know all of you do. I know all of you do. Band, band aid and all. <laughs> yep. All of you are looking at him. He loves giving attention. He loves giving attention. Neither is it right for us to love our father and not one another. No matter where our brothers and sisters are in their walk with God, they are to be objects of our love because we have the same Heavenly Father. This is hard. This is very hard because you and I have different personalities. Any extroverts around here? Any extroverts? Okay, Annabeth is one. Any ambiverts? In other words, they're in the middle. They're not so outgoing, but they're not... Timid? Okay, Abigail, I disagree with you, but anyway. Okay, a few ambiverts. There's some like there was in the middle. Any, any introverts? Okay, that's okay. You know, that's okay. God made us who we are, and with our personality, he wants to use us. So, um, personalities can very easily, especially in a church context, go like this. We don't fit well, or we have issues with our person, because one person wants to do this, and then the other person wants to do this because they have different reasons, or different thought processes. But no matter what, God commands us to be loving. Now, we go to verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God... When we love God and keep His commandments. 
we know, the word know there is important. You want to know whether or not you are in close fellowship with God, Christian? You can see it in how you relate with your fellow brother and sister. When we are obeying God's commands, we are doing right by fellow believers, which is a way we show that we love them. Because all, most of God's commands, you know what? Go, hold your finger here. Let's go to Exodus 20. Go to Exodus chapter 20. I want to show you something, a little thought here. Exodus chapter 20 is the Ten Commandments. And this is God's building block for a for society to work. Can any who would like to read for me verses one and two? Who would like to read verses one and two out loud? Go ahead, Sam. And God spake all these things, these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thank you. God is starting off to Israel of who he is, with who he is. I am Jehovah. I brought you out of Egypt, out of 430 years of bondage, Israel. I wrote in my Bible, next to the word bondage, therefore. So in other words, based on who he is to them, he gives them these Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. We skip down to verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's number 3. Number 4. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The first four commandments are related to God. Can anyone tell me what the fifth one is? It's in verse 12. Yes. Now he's going to get into relational relationships between human beings here. Father and mother in verse, verse 12. Then verse 13, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. That's all of verse 17 there. So four of them are related to God. The other six deal with interpersonal relationships between human beings. So, when we're obeying God's commands... And put yourself in Old Testament Israel's shoes here. When you are obeying these six commands, you're doing right by other Israelites. You're showing that you love them. Now we're in 2022. We're not Israel. We're the New Testament church. Same idea. When we're obeying God's commands, when we're obedient to his word, we are doing right by fellow believers. Because God also tells us what to do with personal relationships between you and I. What is right and that which is wrong. So, the love of God is displayed through us when we keep His commandments. You love God? Okay. Be obedient to Him. And part of being obedient to Him is to do what He tells you to do when it comes to personal relationships. Now here's another, here's a question for you. Let's be more specific. Do you ever struggle with wanting to obey God's commandment to love your brother? It's hard. It's hard, I'll be honest with you. I'll put my hat down here. It's hard for me to love lost people sometimes. 
welcome to retail. <laughs> Any retail people here? I know a few, okay, Carmen. I have customers, I have customers who have, who always are trying to find a discount somewhere. And we're since, like that. <laughs> sorry, say it again. We're all like that. We're all like that. <laughs> Times are tough, we all want to save money. Any, anybody who's not against saving money, I'll talk to you afterwards. I get it, but what the price says on the display is the, is the price. I did not come up with that price. Home Depot did. Okay? Um, so I had, I've had to tell customers, no, I can't do that. And sometimes they're still insistent they ask for a manager. So if me being as blunt as I can be, while at the same time being nice, is not working, I have to go to someone higher than me to tell them the same thing. Now, you and I as believers have the Holy Spirit, but guess what? We still have problems like that. It's no different. It should be, it should be more easier for us because we're tr we want to share the, law, share the gospel with lost people, but... We think it's easier in the church because we're all brothers and sisters, but you know what? We're all sinners still. Do you ever struggle with wanting to obey God's commandment to love your brother? I say that because go back to 1 John 5, and he says in verse 3, his commandments are not grievous. They're not burdensome. Hold on a second now. John is saying... God's commandments are not burdensome. That's the word, that's the word grievous there. But it is still burdensome to me sometimes. You ever ask yourself that question? Well, I'm going to conclude with verses 4 and 5 here that will help us with that answer. The overcoming life. Verse 4. For this is, uh, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Okay, look at verse 4 very, very carefully. Does it say whatsoever or whosoever? Okay, that's important. He's not talking about believers being overcomers. It's something that the believer has that is overcoming the world. It's a thing. It's not a person. So it's not a who, it's a what. The believer isn't overcoming the world. It's rather, it's what he has. Now, he's going to go a little bit further. This thing that overcomes the world is a victory. This is the victory. So this possession that the believer has is a world overcoming victory. So this is something, not someone. So uh, stay with me here. Now this victory, this born of God victory overcomes the world, even our faith. When you see the words born of God, what do you think of? You can talk to me. Sorry? That God lives in the heart of the person. Yes, yes. Okay, what else? He wants to the family of mm -hmm. the children of God. Yes, yes. He is part of God's family. Do you remember? When does a believer become part of God's family? <laughs> Salvation. The moment when he or she puts her faith, his or her faith, in Christ for salvation alone, that's when he's born of that's when he is born of God. Okay, this is my interpretation of verse four. This victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. I believe that specific faith in verse four is talking about the new birth. The born of God victory 
that overcomes the world is the new birth. Can I tell you something? That victory is the greatest victory. You, over, you, by God's grace, no longer were subjugated to Satan's system. You're no longer part of the world. You belong to Christ now. And that was a victory that Jesus won for you. Now, verse 5 is now, now he's going to get a little bit more specific when it comes to the Christian life. Who is he that overcometh, but he that believeth? That Jesus is the Son of God. You receive the first overcoming, the first victory at salvation. You keep on overcoming the world every time you trust the Lord. The word believeth there is in the present tense, meaning it's something that's ongoing. We experienced the greatest victory over the world by faith in Christ alone. Doesn't that mean that subsequent victories, such as loving your brother, are experienced the same way? I cannot love my brother or sister unless I trust the Lord to love him through me. My love is selfish. Selfish always wants something for me in the end. Remember what we talked about when, when we discussed God's love? It's totally selfless. I don't, it doesn't matter if I don't benefit or if I get hurt. I still want to display my love. That's what Jesus did. It was for us. And loving our brother the way God loves, that victory such as that can only be done through dependence on Christ. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2. The book of Colossians chapter 2. Who would like to read verses 6 and 7 for me? Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Thank you. Verse 6 is what I want to focus on. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. The same way you got saved is the same way you live the Christian life. We tend to think that we got saved by faith, praise God. Oh, now that I'm a Christian, I have to just do what God tells me to do. We get saved by faith, but we live the Christian life by works. Does that work? No. Try living the Christian life by works. It is a miserable life. So much so, when Gandhi came to the United States to study, he actually studied Christianity. And you, and you know Gandhi was not a believer. You know what he said about Christians? This... this boggles my mind still. He did not become a Christian because when he saw Christians, he, he says that they are like people walking with a headache all the time. This is what I mean. This is what I think he means. They preach a, a gospel that is freeing, which it is. It changes lives, but they still feel like they're under a burden, like they're not living victoriously. They don't share that joy or example, you know, exude that joy. The Christian life shouldn't be full of burdens or full of headaches. Do we live in a sin-cursed earth? Yes, we still have a sin nature, but you know what? We have the Spirit of God who can enable us every time we have headaches to have victory over them. So whenever you come to church and you uh, 
come across a brother or a sister that has a different personality than you do and it rubs differently and it doesn't feel right, depend on the Holy Spirit to love. Depend on the Holy Spirit to love. There's a story of a young man back in the 20s who bought his first Ford Model T. Back in the 20s when Henry Ford came up with this, this was the rage. It was the, like the, the newest toy for adults. Well, this young man, he bought his Ford Model T, he bought it off the lot, and he um, started driving it. And just hours later, after he took it off the lot, it, it, it started to have problems. So he stopped on the road, and he stopped to the side, and he was working on it. And then there's this older gentleman who came up behind him, uh, who was also driving a Model T. And this old, older gentleman came out of his car and said, Hey, young man, do you need help with your Model T? I can help you. He said, No, 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 sir. I'm, I got it. The older man said, No, just seriously, just give me five minutes. Five, five minutes with it. No, 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 it's okay. I got it. Thank you. You know how young men are. This young man was still at it an hour later, and this Older gentleman was still in his car waiting for that whole hour. So he comes out, are, are you sure you don't need help? I can, I can help you with that. Give me five minutes. No, no, no. Young, uh, sir, I'm okay. I got it. Believe me. I can handle it. Another hour passed by. And he's, that older gentleman is still in that car waiting, just watching this young man struggle. And then he comes out. He says, seriously, young man. Give me five minutes with your Model T. Give me five minutes. The young man was frustrated. He said, all right, all right, sir. you got five minutes. Okay. So this older gentleman, he, he does a couple things in his engine. Three minutes. Start the car. It started. And it worked. The young man was, was amazed. Sir, how did you do it? How did you... I took three hours to look at this thing. You did it in three minutes. How did you do it? This older gentleman had a top hat, and he took it off, put it on his chest, held out his hand. He said, the name's Ford. <laughs> Henry Ford. <laughs> the young man tried to fix and fix and fix his Model T, but he didn't realize that the creator of the Model T was behind him and he could fix it in three minutes. We as Christians sometimes are like that young man when it comes to loving our brother. It is frustrating. It is, we feel like we're going nowhere. This is really... <clears throat> but it's sad that we don't connect with the creator of love. And we're rightly related to him. You have troubles loving your brother and sister. Talk to your heavenly Father. He'll tell you how to get how to have a great relationship with your brother or sister. Look to him. Trust him. And you let God love through you. It's amazing. I've experienced it in my life, where God helped me to love somebody. And I didn't have any more feelings of resentment or hurt from that other person. I just loved them. And God helped me. You can experience that too. Let's pray. Lord, we conclude this uh, topic on loving our brothers and sisters. Lord, this is something that uh, is deep on your heart because you, all through the epistles, tell us how we should rightly relate to one another. And Lord, that's difficult. It only can come by the Spirit of God. By looking to you, O Lord, who is love, to teach us to love. Help us to see our brothers and sisters through your eyes. Not through our human eyes. Lord, I pray that you would help us to put this into practice today. Remind us, Lord, that you created love and you can help us to love. 
Lord, we look forward to the morning service. I pray that you would do something special among us. That the word of God would be made plain to us. And that we can walk away with a kernel of truth that would change our lives. And help us to grow. And to love our brother. And love lost people that we come in contact with every day. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.